This is a quote that I start my story on, really my purpose. And I've named the story Return on Life, which I love that title because that's the title of the podcast, Return on Life podcast. But really it is about the return of life. Racers ready. That's what we did. We were always racing from one thing to the next and everything was a race for my twin brother and I. And uh, so unconsciously, we just raced at everything. We, we competed against each other on just about everything from running from um, to the bus stop, to our motorcycle racing, to playing basketball, to whatever it was, it was always a competition. So everything was a race. And on that evening, when we decided to race, neither of us knew what was going to happen. What had happened is that uh, in the racing process of me riding the motorcycle, he uh, in the pickup truck. Um, I went to pass him in the pickup truck and things changed in a hurry. Through some riding errors, through some racing errors, I was launched off the motorcycle head first and torpedoed into a building, traveling at a high speed of rate. I woke up, I couldn't move. Fear gripped me at that point because I started realizing that I just might be paralyzed for the rest of my life. Being that there was two individuals in our town the week prior that had been paralyzed, it was now reality in my world as well. I was thinking about those two individuals. One was a 40-year-old man and the other was a 16-year-old boy at the school that I attended. Now I was 14 and he was 16. He didn't know who I was, but I knew who he was because you know you always know the older kids in school. In the morning, I woke in the hospital of my small town called Pincher Creek and I remember the doctor coming in and my parents and my brother, Jerry, coming in. And uh, in that moment, they were talking to me, but I didn't hear anything because all I was thinking of was trying to communicate with my twin brother in silence. See, we as twins, we could talk to one another. We could communicate and basically share our thoughts with one another because we'd lived our entire lives together and we just knew each other. And so in that silence, even though the doctor was speaking with me and my parents, Jerry and I were having a ESP conversation and I was reaching out to him saying, I'm very afraid, I need you. I need you to help me through this. And in that moment, he also shared through silence that he was afraid, he was afraid for me, afraid for us. And um, he said, we, we'll get through this together. You don't know what you have <laughs> until you lose it. From that, I was then transported to Calgary Foothills Hospital moved into a room and little did I know I was going to be in the room with that other individual that was at my school that was injured the week before and was now paralyzed from the waist down. I was alone some 120 miles away from my home. It was a busy time of year on the farm because it was seeding time which means putting in the crop because without a crop you don't earn money so it was seeding in, in, in the springtime of busyness. A lot of times just processing and thinking what this all means. What is my purpose? How am I going to you know, come out of this and, and be whole again in some ways? Because uh, when you wake up moments after an accident like that and you've lost all your feeling, um, you're just not sure of anything. Yet there was something in the back of me that was saying there's, there's something really big about to happen, something bigger for your life than you can expect or that you think is going to happen. I was put into traction and where they tried to stretch my neck, my spinal cord, get all those vertebrae back into the right areas. And there was three vertebrae that were damaged quite significantly, C3, C4, and C5, which are the top three, you know, top, top three to five vertebrae in your neck. And they were crushed and beat up pretty bad but here was the good news the good news is I did not sever my spinal cord 
which meant that my feeling would be coming back and it was starting to come back uh, within the first few days. So that was really encouraging. But now the long process of learning how to function with a, with a neck that's been fractured, learning how to essentially use and get all my fingers and hands moving again because you know my left arm was completely dead my right was slow my legs were slow but they were starting to come back and so the whole process of learning how to do that again and um, gosh it was uh, a long journey 46 days in the hospital of recovery um, surgery as well and um, you know, just the, the, the frightening fear of that at 14 years of age. You know, there's a, there's a crucible moment, a really big, big moment, kind of what I would call the ignite moment is when the doctor, Dr. Taylor is his name, um, leaned over and said this, Randy, most people would have uh, succumbed to death with the blow that you took and the neck injury that you have, yet here you are. Here you are. There's a very big purpose for you. There's something much, much bigger in life and somebody has a big, big plan for you, Randy. And that ignited my purpose. That ignited who I am. And, uh, you know, at 14, mm, do you know that? Not really, but when I look back, I can see all the pieces of the puzzle fitting together about my competitive nature, my desire to be great, uh, my fight to get back to where I was, the purpose that somebody, a higher being, and I call it God, God had for me, and how he was going to use me to impact other people in these similar situations. One of the moments that was really shocking for me, a, a real unexpected, oh my goodness, was the day that they released me from the hospital. Think about this. You've been in this hospital, you've uh, entered the hospital where you're paralyzed, you can't move from the neck down, and now you have feeling again. Your legs move, your hands move, even though they're slow, but there's progress there, and you're progressing through getting better. And the day that they said, okay, Randy, you get to go home today, guess what I did? I said, I can't go home today. And they looked at me like, what do you mean you can't go home today? Everything that I knew at that point, my security blanket, everything that gave me comfort, security was in that hospital room. The smells, the odors, the terrible food, the nurses coming by, everything was now the new norm. And I didn't want that new norm to be changed, even though leaving that hospital was the most exciting thing that they thought that I would be excited about. How many of you have been in those situations? You know, you got really comfortable. Whether it, either, whether it be through, you know, an injury, um, a setback in life, a job loss, mental health, whatever it may be, and then you go into a comfort zone, a cocoon, a safety spot. It may feel safe, but you still need to move on because if you do not move on, you will not grow. And so for me being pushed out of the hospital, at least that's what it felt like to me, I'm being pushed out of that hospital room, the bed, everything I knew was the best thing for me, yet I didn't want to do it. And so I encourage you when you feel that you are stuck, that you can't go on, you can go on. It is there for a reason, it's there for you to grow, become more. To build on it it's your purpose it builds on whatever you're building on you need to push through that don't let yourself fall back into the trap of no this is secure this is comfortable press the limits of what you are remember adversity does not form who you are it's how you rise that was the opening line to this story of mine adversity doesn't define who you are it's how you rise so rise up and go and get it you know so much of what you see on social YouTube it's a lot of people pumping themselves up you know and is that real is that the real world 
most of us struggle. We have insecurities, we have hardship. We don't always win the day, but I'm here to share with you that if you know who you are, you're comfortable in your skin, you understand that adversity and crucible moments will come along and that you can find a, a, a way out of it, that you can find purpose out of it, that you can find you know, the, the joy, the gratitude out of it, then you're winning. It doesn't have to be a big song and dance. It doesn't have to be a raw, raw moment. But just know that you can get better every day, a little bit at a time. 1%, 2%, 3%. And really that's what I did through this accident is every day I just got a little bit better. A little win here, a little win there. And before I knew it, I could stand for more than 30 seconds. Before I knew it, I could walk more than 50 feet. Before I knew it, gosh, I was back on a motorcycle. So no matter where you're at today, I want you to give you, I want to give you hope. No matter where you are today, I want to give you hope that it's in you, that the adversity, that the challenges, that the crucibles do not need to define you because it's how we rise. It's how we get up every morning and say, if only I could be a little bit better and I will be better and I will get better. It's how we rise.